Hey there everyone, my name is Andrew for Aurora Gameworks and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial series. This series will be focusing on blueprints for door functions, opening and closing the doors, and having functions that differ like if I want to walk up to the door and it opens on its own, or if I just want to press a button and it opens, or if I want to hold down the button and it opens. And at the end of the series we'll be will be combining all of these functions into one blueprint where you can change the style function of the door uh, with just a simple variable. Uh, so with that being said, let's begin. First things first, we're going to want to create our door blueprint. I've already done that in this situation, just down here. Uh, these two mesh components here uh, I have created in Blender and if you want to download these uh, for use in your own project following along this tutorial then the link will be down in the description for you to download that. But this should work with your own um, models or even just simple like meshes that are already um, in the engine. First thing that we want to do is make sure that the door can actually talk with our player character. So let's go into our door blueprint. We can see here in our viewport that we have our door. It's made up of three meshes, one for the frame and two for the doors. And if we want to have this door blueprint talk with our player character, we're going to have to create some sort of overlap event so what I'm going to do is come down to this add component and get a box collision. Uh, in this situation it's actually combined itself to one of the doors. I'm just going to drag itself over that, make sure that it's disconnected, that it's its own entity essentially, not attached to anything. Um, because in, in that scenario, if it's attached to this door, if we have the door swing open, the mesh that determines if the player is inside or outside that collision mesh to tell the door to open and close, that's going to be moving with the door as it opens and closes. So make sure that it's on its own so it doesn't move with the door as it opens and closes. Next we're just going to scale this up. I think giving it about this much distance on each side should be enough. And I'm just going to scale it up vertically. Okay, cool. I'm going to rename this and call it Player Door Open Zone. And while we're here, I'm just going to rename these as well. Let's call this Frame. Let's call this Door 1. And Door 2. I would, I would call it Door Left and Door Right, but Left and Right is going to depend on which side of the door that you're on. <laughs> so let's Compile and Save. Next, we're going to want to click on our player door open zone just the just the collision mesh that we made and on component begin overlap we want to click plus here down on events and in our event graph we shall now get this what I'm going to do is cast to third person character um, this is the third person example blueprint that comes with the engine so the name of your playable character might be different depending on if it's if it's your some some project that that you are working on where you have to find a a custom name or you're using a different template so just keep that in mind and what we're going to want to do is get our other actor and connect that into our third person character so they can communicate the next thing that we're going to want to do is just for now to set everything up for later, we're going to once again go to our player door open zone and get the component end overlap and just do the same. Next thing that we're going to want to do is create a timeline. Uh, we will be using this timeline to, to open and close the doors basically. So over here, let's get timeline. I'm going to call this door open slash close. 
Now, for this first door, um, out of three that we're going to be making, uh, this one is just going to be where you where you enter the player door open and close zone, and that it'll just open on its own. So, what so what we're going to do for that is have on overlap play and on end overlap reverse next I'm gonna get door one and door two and we're going to want to set relative rotation on both of these just like that that'll be in the update and we're going to want to split the struct let's make sure that we compile and save so we do not lose our progress in our newly created timeline let's just double click to open this let's create two floats door one rot and door two rot so each of these graphs is going to control the rotation of each door. If we come back into our viewport real quick, we'll see that we we click on each door and the rotation values. Um, for this one here, it's at zero, and for this one here, it's at minus 180. That's because um, I flipped it over so that it can fill the other half of the space. <laughs> I, I've actually just realized a uh, error <laughs> live uh, with my door function, <laughs> it's uh, opening from the center and not the outside. That's my mistake. Um, so, real quick, I'm just going to fix this. I'm going to rotate that 180 degrees and move it so it's here, so that this this axis this central axis that the model is actually moving around from is actually at the hinges so now that we've fixed the placement of our doors we can now determine door one has a starting rotation on the z-axis of minus 180 and door two has a starting rotation on the z-axis of zero so with that we can go back to our timeline have door one whoops <laughs> Let's just delete that. So, on door one rotation, at time zero, we can get the value of minus 180. And on door two rot, we can have at time zero a value of zero. So now we should get the numbers for what the door Z axis should be uh, when the doors are fully open. So in this case, we rotate it like that. Uh, door one is going to move to 90, and door two is going to move to, well, 90 as well. <laughs> so we can come into here. Um, let's make it at one second. Change the timeline length to one second. Let's get door one rotation value to 90, and door two rotation value also to 90. You can click on these buttons here to fit the, the graph nodes correctly in your view. So what we're going to do now is smooth out the, uh, the uh, motion. So we can right click on these and turn these to auto. As you can see on the graph, it'll have a smoother uh, motion and it'll just look better in general for what we're trying to achieve With that done we can now connect our door one rotation to the z-axis on our set relative rotation for door one and door two rotation to the same here Let's compile and save And now if we enter into our level, we'll see that if we interact with the doors that they will open and close. Um, in this case, the door on the left um, is completely going the wrong way. I think I know what's actually causing that. Just, just really quickly before I forget, um, 
both of these values don't actually meet at, at 90 like how I said before. We want the door rotation for door 2 to go from 0 to 90 and on door 1 rotation we want it to go from minus 180 to minus 270. So now if we enter back into our level and we walk over you can see that the doors will now open and close whenever we enter the the mesh for the for the uh, collision but you'll notice that now um, we still can't actually go through the door that is because there is a collision mesh tied to the door frame that is actually getting in the way and there is a way to fix that what we're going to do is go to our door frame static mesh scroll down here and we're going to find collision complexity and rather than using the project default, we're going to use complex collision as simple. Uh, now, now if we turn on the collision, um, you know, there's just a, a empty archway for us to move through. Uh, for instance, if I change that back, you see this green box here. Um, you know, it means that we won't actually be able to go through. So if we use complex collision as simple, then we will be able to actually travel through this archway like so just like that but now the next issue is is that you can see here during the doors opening and closing if we are on the wrong side of the door we'll actually get caught up in the collision of those doors. So what we can do is have it so that during overlap with our, with our player open and close door zone, we can actually turn off the collision on those doors to make sure that that, that does not happen. So I'm just going to drag off a little bit of extra space over here. I'm going to get door one and door two. I'm going to set collision enabled and we want no collision we can copy this and get it for our end overlap and we can set it to collision enabled so now what that means is that we will not get stuck on the doors um, if we're running on it through that side. Um, if if the door takes a while to open though, this can actually end up looking uh, more fake um, because you can see there we just end up going straight through the mesh because the door isn't opening quickly enough. So for instance, if I decide to come back to this timeline, um, rather than taking one second, let's say it takes 0.3 of a second. change that timeline length to 0.3, compile and save. Yes, yeah, so you can see now that we are able to open and close the door and walk through it uh, pretty, pretty effortlessly, I would say. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this first part. Uh, in the second part of this short series, on 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 door blueprints we're going to um, set up a function that has a door open and closed based on input we actually press a button to open and close the door uh, with that being said i've been andrew for aurora gameworks thank you for watching this tutorial uh, if this has helped you make sure to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next tutorial video thank you guys i'll see you later